Hello and welcome to Channel's Book Club. I'm Olakunle Kasumu. The subject of election is quite a delicate one, especially in a developing country like Nigeria. And it is unarguably the bedrock of democratic governments. Debo Nifade, in his book titled Liberating Nigeria, a guide to winning elections and reviving our country, explains the need for young and new breeds of politicians to emerge. His book challenges us to explore smart and pragmatic politics that should be adopted to change Nigeria. He joined us to talk about his life as a writer, his book, and matters related. Enjoy this. Um, Debo, nice to have you on Channel's Book Club. Thank you very much. I'm so glad to be here. Great to have you here. And um, well done on your book. Thank you so much. Um, Liberating Nigeria, a guide to winning elections and reviving our country. Well done. Why did you write this? Well, uh, everybody just talks. I feel that we've been talking, people, especially the younger people, social media, um, and people are not ready to act. You, what you hear is more of um, election is going to be rigged, nothing is going to happen, we cannot do it, Nigeria is hopeless. There's a lot of abuse you know, on social media, the Igbos against the Yorubas, Yorubas against the North. And I felt it's time for the victims to start coming together. And I want to raise the conversation from that of ignorance more you know, to a, a, level of, a better level of discussion by providing information to people. I think okay. people need to understand what it takes to win elections. And we need to understand that it's possible. And we also need to understand uh, policies. Um, it's, you know, if we can raise the conversation to a more inf informed one, I think we can then begin to plan. I also, I'm also trying to let people know that it's going to take time. It's not a two-year affair. You can't just wake up one day and say you want to be president. It's going to take time. Take time. Uh, I'm trying to explain patience. I'm using, and I spend time juxtaposing events that have happened, similar events in other countries as well as Nigeria. Just clearly trying to tell people that it's possible. and. Yeah explaining how it can be done. Can be done. Anyway, we'll, dig, we'll dig into the book um, very soon, but let's talk a bit around it. Liberating Nigeria. Does Nigeria need liberating? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Obvious answer, huh? Yeah, you know, and, and you know, one of, one of the other things I did was, rather than talk so much about problems, which is what a lot of people do, is to talk about solutions. I felt we need to get more books out to discuss solutions, and I'm looking for opportunities to really get into discussions where people are focusing on solutions much more than the problems. Okay, great. Okay, now, this book is very practical, very down to earth, very street shooting, no holds barred. It was like, um, if you were to ask me to tell you about the guy who wrote the book, I would say, fearless, ready to damn the consequences, you know, that, did I get that right? I, I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I've so. I've not known you so much, <laughs> but from, from, reading, from reading this, that's the impression I had. Yes. You wanted to tackle the issue headlong. Yes. Now, very practical in the sense that you said, look, enough of all these theories and all these talks. What does it really take to win elections? And, that's something you focused on, and I like that about this book. Thank you. So Very much. realistic. And then, uh, and, and to buttress that, early part of the book, you, you, you give a few examples of people and what they did to win elections. You, you mentioned George Opongwe yes. in Liberia. Yes. You mentioned um, Imran Khan yes. Yes. in Pakistan. Um, you mentioned um, even, even Madiba, Madiba yes. Mandela, the compromises they had to make until ANC compromised. Yes. Mandela didn't win an election. Until George Ware hobnobbed with um, the tailors and the, 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 the um, those. Yes. He didn't win an election in Liberia. Until Muhammad Buhari hobnobbed with APC and Ashwaju and the rest of them. He yes. also. Tell me a bit about that. Um, why did you take that approach and talk a bit about so what i'm trying to tell people is that i'm not i'm, I'm trying to be honest with people at the beginning of the book i said one thing i promise you is i'm going to be honest in the book 
I'm not here to tell you that you can win elections just by being Mr. Nice. Uh, you also have to learn that you have to collaborate with lots of people. Some, some of them would not be like mine. Some of them would be different from you. You have to be willing to compromise. You have to be able to talk to NERTW. You have to be able to uh, go to villages and talk to people, speak their language. Uh, you cannot wake up and say stomach infrastructure is going to disappear. You cannot wake up to say zoning is going to go away anytime soon. I explained all those, and I've, I've also explained that it took Imran 20 years. Uh, before 20 years. 20 years. Mm -hmm. It was a, just early 40s, you know, brilliant, just like Okocha, I can I use an example. Popular in the country, came back home from England, and he thought, you know. And he had to take religion seriously. Exactly. Because the people of Pakistan consider religion to be critical. Uh, exactly. Exactly. For him to be able to exactly. get into their hearts. Yeah. He did everything that the, the society required from him. His wife was, you know, British. His and wife had, converted to Islam. Yeah, had to cover her head, you know, everything. He, and he, before now... If he didn't do those things, he would never have won. No. That, that's what you wrote. Not here. possible. He had two parties that have been ruling that country for about 50 years. Uh, you know, and this is the first time in about 50 years that a new party will win election in Pakistan. And it, but it took him 20 years, and that's what I'm trying to tell my generation, that it can happen, but it's going to take us a long time. But we also have to be willing to listen to older people. We also have to be willing to learn from the older people. It's enough of this idea that because we're young, vibrant, we know much more than the older people. No, you have to sit down with those traditional politicians, listen to them. We, we don't have to copy them entirely. There are some things we will not do. I strongly believe we, we should not do illegal things. We need to stay above board. We need to make sure that we have principles. But you have to be ready to learn politics, you know, and not think that Nigeria is going to change because you, you just understand theories or you want to speak a lot of English. Sorry to repeat this, but I, I mean, I just, I just got really caught up with the idea. You, you, you said here that um, if George Ware, George Ware ran for elections yes. and lost. Yes. And one of the reasons you gave for him losing was he was not academically qualified. And Liberia is a country where that was important, right? Well, that's what. So, okay, go ahead. So he went back to school yes. to get a degree. And apart from going back to school to get a degree, he developed, he developed a relationship with um, Mrs. Taylor. Johnson, uh, first, Yomi Johnson. Yomi Johnson. And then his vice president, Mrs. Taylor. Mrs. Taylor, who was the wife of um, Charles Taylor. Charles Taylor. I mean, Johnson was the one who killed um, Samuel, Samuel, Doe. Samuel Doe. Yes. So he had to do those things yes. to get into mainstream politics yes. in Liberia. Otherwise, he was wasting his time. Absolutely. And then you also say that um, President Buhari, as popular as he was, yes. pulling in millions of votes yes. until he had the structure yes. of which the APC provided, yes. he was never going to win that election. Yes. And, and to talk a little bit more about George Ware, his people uh, said he didn't go to school. Oh, he's not educated. He humbled himself. He went to school. He didn't just say, oh, no, you know, I, I was World Football of the Year. I lived abroad. No, he, he accepted what some people said. He went to school, came back and said, oh, now, now I've gone to school. And they said, oh, well, you have to learn the ropes. And then he humbled himself, became a senator. Some of the people in my generation don't even want to do that. Mm. This is a guy that was trying to be president and, this, and had a step back and went to Senate. What did he do further? He decided to talk to the politicians. I, I mean, for those of us who have watched the, the, you know, Samuel Doe, you know, cool years ago, we know who Yomi Johnson is. Mm -hmm. But these are guys that have some regional popularities. And he felt he needed to really work with them. He worked with Yomi Johnson. And at the time when they were looking for a woman, somebody also has some popularity you know, a different type of popularity, they settled for Mrs. Doe. You are Mrs. saying Taylor. that to win an election, if you need to get on the table with the bad guys, you get on that table with yes. them. That's what you're saying. Exactly. Exactly. Idealists are not going to agree with you on this. Well, that mean, I mean, Moralists are not going to exactly, agree with you Exactly. That is what I'm saying. If I, you want I, to clean up the mess, then don't go, don't go, I mean, don't I, go with those who are Causing the mess. To borrow a language from Tony Baker, it says contact without contamination. Now, I don't know how easy it is, but the point is you need to be ready to work with everybody, even as a leader. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes, even as a leader. You would have senators who are good, you have some that are bad. 
you, you have to learn how to work with all types of people from, poli from politics. And you can't even win elections without that. There are some good guys that have gone into politics in Nigeria today, but they needed the platform some, sometimes from godfathers, sometimes money. Let's talk about money. Even in America, you get money from corporate world. You, you, cannot, you cannot win election without getting big money from some hmm. powerful about, people. This is about being practical. Yeah. You, you, you seemed in your book to be slightly, maybe, not, maybe this is not the right word, correct me if I'm wrong, but you seem a bit impatient or slightly irritated with most of the people who ran for election in 2019. Yeah, yeah. And I'll read from your book. You said in describing, in describing, um, let me, let me, let me, let me get a bit practical here. You said here that Atiku Abubakar, his personal and PDP brands have been greatly damaged in recent years, so that affected him. Yes. You said of um, Omoyele, Omoyele Showore, Showore, I always, um, sorry about that, um, that he was the rookie was a rookie politician. You said here about Obieze Kwesili that great technocrats, but you saw her embrace sensationalism. You said here about Kingsley Mogalu that, again, great technician, brilliant man, but you said like Eze Kwesili, he had little knowledge of Nigerian politics. You said of Donald Duke that he was supposed to be mentoring, providing mentorship for new breed politician. You said of Fela, Fela, Fela Durotoye that probably just wanted to earn some popularity, you know, and all that. So here, I, it seems here that you didn't think those who ran in 2019 were very practical, very pragmatic. M many of them from the South, and the power was never going to go back to the Absolutely. South. Absolutely. So why were they wasting their exactly. time? Exactly. But there's zoning in Nigeria, and it's not going to go away soon. In 2019, power was going to go to the North. So why do you even waste your time? If you're from the South. We, we, everybody that follows politics knows that. And let me tell you this. Um, Shore is the only one in that group that I felt uh, had the um, followership that could have helped him to transition from an activi activist to a politician. But he also needs to humble himself to learn politics. They're two different things, yeah. activism and politics. They're two they're different. You have to gradually transition yourself into politics. You have to learn what politics is. And, you know, I, I use the word surprise. He surprised me because, you know, he's not young. He's 47. He's been, you know, he knows the system. He cannot claim ignorance of the system. And you can't run like a student, you know, an activist. You know, you, know, you have to run politics and embrace more people, you know. And the other people were technocrats. You know, like I said, you know, I went to the same school as Mogalu. They were technocrats. And again, technocrats don't win elections anywhere in the world. In my book, I mentioned, apart from Hong Kong and uh, Singapore, tiny countries. Mention one country that is ruled by technocrats. It was tried, you know, Italy and Greece, they tried it during the crisis time. None of them lasted up to two years, one, one year. Every other time, politicians win elections everywhere in the world. So when you come to me and say, it's time for technocrats to win elections, it just clearly shows you're not ready. You have to be ready to transition. Uh, but what you're saying in this book to the young generation is let's get real, let's get practical, let's get involved. Is that, is that a good summary? Exactly. That a good summary? Exactly. And I'm saying that let's learn it first. I mean, that's why I wrote the book. People read my book. Learn it. If you have older people that are in the politics, sit down with them, ask them questions, learn from them. Don't, you're not going to get helpful details from social media. You need to talk to the grassroots politicians and ask them, how are elections won in Nigeria? And then we have to build a coalition. I think starting from a social political group, you know, even before a political party is born, that can eventually register you know you know millions of people you know we have 17 year old people that will be clocking 18 very soon they might be up to 5 10 million in nigeria 17 year old we need to reach those 17 year old people we need to find a way to teach them politics get them involved from that early age so that 2023 20, we can shock these guys and see 1 million votes first time voters now it doesn't mean we're going people. to win you know. I'm so sorry well, to cut you. We are really out you. of time. Thank you so much. We will go on and on till tomorrow on this. So, so, thank so you so exciting. much. And um, so, so loaded. Thank you very much for.
given us this. Um, hopefully, maybe we'll have you back sometime. Thank you so again. much for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Nice to have you on Channels Book Club. Thank you so much, yeah.